Get ready! You're tuned in to Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T, bringing you the hottest trending topics on social media. Stay connected. Instagram.com slash Lovely Tea 2002. Hey, you guys. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T. Yay! Hey, you guys. I hope you guys are doing good. Oh, my goodness. I had a nice break away from the damn Internet, um, away from just a lot of nonsense. Um, I had an awesome Valentine's Day weekend. I really did. And um, I'm glad to somewhat be back with this podcast here. I could have enjoyed a few more days, but it's all to the good. So this weekend was crazy. Not only was it cold up here, but you know it's Minnesota, so that ain't stopping shit. Still got dressed, still looked fly, and still had a good old funky time, right? But I was noticing that a lot of other states... We're dealing with a polar vortex. Now, it got as cold as negative 20 degrees here, like late, late at night. But like during the day, it was like a high of negative five. So, you know, hey, I'll take what we can take, right? But I noticed that Texas, Oklahoma, and a lot of other states were dealing with like just a crazy freeze. Texas had a lot of snow and ice. There was that huge car pileup that happened a few days ago. So a lot of you guys have been keeping us abreast on the Discord, which is wonderful. Um, Right now, as far as the power outages go, it says that basically Texas has over 4 million people right now suffering some type of outage. Oregon has 219,000. Oklahoma has 164,000. Louisiana has 160,000. And Kentucky has 147,000. These are states with people who are experiencing extremely cold temperatures. The power grid is literally falling apart in Texas, okay? Right now, the infrastructure is old. And then on top of that, they don't really get cold like this in Texas. So the infrastructure right now is going crazy and a lot of the grids are down. And because a lot of the grids are failing, what's happening is that they can't keep the wheat, the corn, and other grains that are a necessity for our food supply. They can't keep them at a certain temperature because everything is freezing due to the you know crappy infrastructure that has not been updated in like 100 years, right? Don't worry, it's not just Texas. The same thing happened here in the Twin Cities. Remember when our bridge collapsed like 10 years ago? That was bad infrastructure. So not throwing shade. The infrastructure in this country is just really bad. So just be careful traveling across bridges and shit like that. So with what's going on in in Texas, it just made me think as I was hearing more and more stories that it's very strange that we're having such a cold, cold winter. It is a scary story. Uh, There are millions without power in Texas and parts of Louisiana, Oklahoma, all up and down the spine, if you will, of the Midwest. Basically, here's what's happened. This ultra deep freeze, not the coldest on record, but close to the coldest ever recorded, is causing this massive surge in power demand. Everybody's trying to crank the heat. So the power companies are trying to crank it up. The problem is There's a lot of shortages in power availability. Some of that has been caused by pipeline issues. Some of that has been caused by wind turbines, Joe, simply freezing and not being able to spin. Remember, 23% of Texas is the wind capital of the United States. 23% of their power is generated by wind, and a large portion of that is not spinning. Either it's frozen or it's frozen too tight that there's not enough wind onshore. There's more offshore that it can rotate that. You've also got other issues with more traditional supplies. To cap that off, and we talk about these short squeezes in GameStop, well, that's kind of happening, guys, in the electricity market as well because the power distributors and the power suppliers, they're having to go into the open market to buy electricity. We don't think it works like that, but it does. I'll give you guys some examples. All right, natural gas. We'll bring up the nat gas chart, and it'll show that natural gas is wholesale trading at three bucks and change. Look at that. See, there you go. But people are buying that gas, Joe, at two, three, and four hundred dollars, not three, because they either are contractually obligated to buy at any price or they need it. We've talked about wholesale electricity prices that have gone up more than a thousand percent in 24 hours in parts of Texas. It won't last forever, but right now that's causing rolling blackouts As many as three plus million Texans do not have power right now, which means no heat and often no water, no heat. When it's five degrees outside, guys, 
is a dangerous and scary situation. Like I said, Minnesota, for the most part, is used to it, but negative 20 degrees is never normal, um, especially when in December it was really warm. We had one of the warmest Decembers ever on record. It didn't even get snow until like literally Christmas Day or the day before. That's how much snow was just scarce up here. There was more snow on the East Coast than here in Minnesota. So it takes me back to, you know, President Joe Biden when he kept saying that we're going to have a, a dark winter. And I remember I had even posted this video game on my Instagram page. I think Instagram took it down. Who, who knows at this point? But I remember I had posted this video game and they were talking about a dark winter. And I was posting the clips of Joe Biden saying the same thing. In 2001. A real-world exercise tested the emergency response to a bioterror attack on the continental United States. The operation was called Dark Winter. Within just a few days, the simulation spiraled out of control. The operation predicted a rapid breakdown in essential institutions, civil disorder, and massive civilian casualties. Dark Winter has revealed how vulnerable we've become. Our lifestyle... Our security, our safety, depends on a delicate and unstable economy. We've created a system so complicated that we no longer understand how to control it. Oil, power, shipping, transport. We live in a complex world. And the more complex it gets, the more fragile it becomes. Built on a global supply chain that gets things where they're needed, just in time. We've created a house of cards. Remove just one, and everything falls apart. And what's fueling the system? Money. Americans can spend $90 billion in a single day of shopping. Last year, 200 million people swarmed their local stores on November 23rd. We call that day Black Friday. Did you know that a flu virus can survive on the surface of a banknote for up to 17 days? One day, there will be a pandemic. It could begin during the crush of Black Friday sales. A pathogen will jump from tainted banknotes to human skin, onto food, toys, children, and loved ones. He's, this is the same fellow who told you this is going to end by Easter last time. This is the same fellow who told you that, don't worry, we're going to end this by the summer. We're about to go into a dark winter, a dark winter. And he has no clear plan, and there's no prospect that there's going to be a vaccine available for the majority of the Americans to fight this pandemic. We're still facing a very dark winter. All right, so you guys just heard it. So I just find it very strange that, you know, like I said, outside of the Midwest and, you know, East Coast, you know, places that are used to getting cold, it's not really strange to us. But when I see places like Texas, Louisiana, even people tell me that it's really cold in Florida, um, that's definitely not normal. And I also feel like, this might be a, a precursor to what we may end up seeing this spring, because if food is not kept at a certain temperature and is being broke down from being frozen when it shouldn't be, we may have a food scarcity this spring, you know, Um I'm also hearing that a lot of citrus crop, which grow in the southern part of the United States, they're saying that the citrus right now are going through it, the strawberries, tomatoes and things like that. So this is really scary. So if you're not paying attention to it, you need to just because you don't live in Texas or somewhere warm. Like I always say, you know, we're just one big circle of life. Whatever affects one affects us all. So that might be something you might want to really uh, do your own research on geoengineering and everything that's going on in all these different states that don't normally get this type of weather. So, yeah, it was really, you know, crazy. And I was hearing all that. That it was just as cold in certain places down south as it was in the Midwest. Maybe not negative 20, but they were definitely getting into like the single digits, which is horrible, especially for that type of climate, because a lot of our food and things like that grow down there. So I hope you guys stay warm. I hope you guys enjoyed your Valentine's Day. I also want to hit on a few other stories here. I had did the live stream about Justin Timberlake. It was called Justin Timberlake getting dragged or whatever. And I talked about, you know, how he did Britney Spears. And I also spoke about how he did Janet Jackson. How I thought it was bogus. How he just basically left her out there on a limb. You know, basically threw her under the bus. Her career was never able to, you know, kind of bounce back fully from that. And he's meanwhile been able to just live his best life. 
So shortly after that, he came out with an apology, which shocked a lot of people. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. Hey, tea sippers. To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.